welcome friends in our last session we were discussing about sustainable manufacturing we discussed that uh, it is very important for manufacturers now to address the environmental concern and uh, it is not simply for the legal purpose we also discussed that uh, it is important to have competitiveness nowadays customers are looking those products which are coming from environmental friendly processes and therefore if you are a sustainable manufacturing organization if you are following the principles of green manufacturing these are going to help you in getting competitiveness and therefore this sustainable manufacturing is not considered simply an exercise to reduce waste which are contributing to the environmental hazards it is not considered to be an exercise of cost cutting rather you can consider this exercise as a exercise for getting more competitiveness as an exercise to identify new customers and then you will have higher revenues so what i am requesting that we need to have a complete change in perception the most of us believe that uh, whenever we have to comply some kind of environmental issues so we say oh ho this is a new problem so we immediately have this kind of reaction that it is a problem but uh, i am saying that uh, it is an opportunity that opportunity will help you to get more competitiveness and we also discuss that how these concepts in a sequence are matching with each other you are becoming a lean organization from lean organization you are entering into the agile manufacturing where you are able to understand the changing customer requirement and then you are entering into the sustainable manufacturing where your manufacturing is also taking into account the environmental issues we discussed that how our seven traditional waste are creating different types of uh, negative environmental impact and we also discuss that what are the different ways possibilities or you can say strategies through which you can implement the sustainable manufacturing continuing the same discussion in this particular session we will discuss some of the key terminologies which are very very important for us to know with respect to sustainable manufacturing because whenever we talk of sustainable manufacturing people start speaking some specific terms so this session will help us in understanding the meaning of those specific terms which are used in sustainable manufacturing literature now just to have a quick recap of the previous session what are the key benefits we can achieve by following the sustainable manufacturing practices now whenever we were discussing that what are the negative environmental impact of the traditional waste so in that discussion if you recall many a times we discuss that because of over production because of inventory because of defects you are using more resources in terms of material in terms of energy so if you are having the sustainable manufacturing your uses of resources will lower down you will require less raw material you will require less space you will require less energy and therefore your cost of production will also go down so that is the direct benefit of green manufacturing practices and therefore this is one thing because uh, in our previous session if you recall we have discussed that uh, you are having a long term objective for the sustainable manufacturing the objectives of sustainability can be achieved in long term but this type of benefit is possible to see in the short term also which will encourage you to follow the principles of sustainable manufacturing so that is the first direct benefit of sustainable manufacturing the second is when you are already following the principles of sustainable manufacturing the 
cost of complying the legal requirements will also go down. If uh, you are it is like that you are driving a four wheeler and at the same time you are carrying a license with you. If you are driving a four wheeler you are only driving because you are carrying a driving license with you. So, whenever some traffic police personnel checks you, you can show the driving license and there is zero cost almost for that compliance. But if you are not having a driving license and you are still driving a vehicle because you can and now somebody checks you, some police personnel checks you, then you have to pay a very heavy fine for violating the law. So, therefore, the cost of complying the law increases if you are not following the sustainable manufacturing principles uh, because uh, then you have to pay different types of fines, uh, penalties etcetera. So, that cost obviously, be very very less uh, if you already in the beginning goes for uh, green manufacturing activities. Then the third benefit which uh, we discussed in our previous session also that you will have improved sales and brand recognition as I was giving the example of ITC. So, that is uh, an example that how company is looking for having its uh, green image. There is a tough competition among the automobile companies, but some of the automobile companies have used this way of uh, promoting their products that if you are purchasing X brand or Y brand, you are purchasing a green vehicle. The vehicle has been made using a sustainable manufacturing process, green process without damaging the environment. So, therefore, you will get uh, the mileage in the eyes of customers also. Then another issue is greater access to financing and capital. When you are having the sustainable manufacturing practices, you can earn carbon credits and these carbon credits can help you in getting or accessing additional finance for your business. These can be the additional source of revenue also. So, that is also a very unique advantage of sustainable manufacturing. When you say that uh, because of my manufacturing activities, some other company is creating so much of pollution, I am helping the planet by reducing the uh, impact, I am conserving the planet by my activities. If I am conserving the planet, uh, you are entitled to get the carbon credits and then you can do some kind of trading of those carbon credits, you can encash your carbon credits and that all is the accessibility to greater financing and capital. Then another benefit of sustainable manufacturing is easier employee hiring and retention. If you are having a pollution free environment inside your plant, so people will love to work in your organization. But if environment is having lot of hazardous gases, there are issues with respect to safety of employees, there is lot of noise, there are another unhealthy conditions within your plant. So, people will not love to work in your plant. So, if you are following the green manufacturing, obviously, when it is environmental friendly manufacturing, it is people friendly manufacturing also. So, people will love to work, uh, they will live in your organization for the longer duration and therefore, easy employee hiring and retention possible. So, all these are the direct benefits of sustainable manufacturing and therefore, those intelligent manufacturers, uh, those who understand the benefits directly, they are now moving into the green manufacturing and sustainable manufacturing and through that uh, they are trying to develop competitiveness for their organization. Now, coming to some key terms, some very specific terms uh, which we use in context of uh, sustainable manufacturing, one of them is uh, environmental impact assessment. This is uh, a very popular term which is normally used in 
big projects. So, any large project you are going to have in that case uh, environmental impact assessment is a kind of a prerequisite and uh, what we do is uh, the process of identifying and evaluating the consequences of one economic activity on the environment and on when appropriate mitigating or these consequences. That means, if I am going to build let us say a uh, dam in some part of Uttarakhand. So, what will be the consequences of building that dam on the environment? So, the complete study is known as environmental impact assessment. There may be uh, different types of economic benefits, uh, there may be another kind of social benefits, uh, but how that pro project is going to impact the environment that is the component of uh, environmental impact assessment and this is uh, uh, becoming very important nowadays uh, because uh, people have become more aware. There are lot of sensitivity about the environment issues uh, and therefore, uh, for any big project uh, uh, this environmental uh, concern is becoming very, very uh, serious. In India also we have seen that uh, people are very uh, crazy about uh, large hydro projects. Uh, they are also crazy about uh, uh, various kind of nuclear plants. Uh, so, uh, people understand that uh, sometime these things may negatively impact their environment. Uh, so, they want that uh, these things should not come into that area. But otherwise also even if uh, you are going to have a uh, manufacturing plant, uh, you should go for environmental impact assessment uh, before establishing a particular uh, uh, plant project facility etcetera. So, this is uh, uh, very often uh, you hear that uh, whether EIA study has been undertaken or not undertaken. Presently to the best of my knowledge, uh, any new project cannot be sanctioned without proper EIA study. This also offers us uh, a career opportunity that uh, uh, young engineers, uh, young managers uh, they can become an expert of uh, EIA studies. So, you can be uh, a third party EIA evaluator, EIA project preparer that uh, will help companies or you can give consultancy to the organizations uh, if uh, some organization is going to have uh, some kind of EIA evaluation. So, uh, that is uh, one type of uh, definition. Then another important definition is uh, environmental management system EMS. Now, EMS is uh, uh, like uh, quality management systems we all know uh, that we have in our organizations. Uh, uh, similarly, you also have environmental management system that what type of uh, environmental system or the practices you are following. So, this is a framework uh, that helps a company achieve its environmental goals through consistent control of its operation. So, as uh, uh, we try to achieve higher quality with the help of quality management system. Similarly, with the help of this uh, EMS framework, uh, a company achieves its environmental goal that uh, we uh, for an example, what type of environmental goal may be there that uh, in the discharge of my uh, gaseous elements, uh, the PM 2 level should be less than this. So, this type of environmental goal can be achieved only when you have a proper framework and that framework is known as uh, environmental management system. The assumption is that this increased control will improve the environmental performance of the company. When you have everything quantified, when everything is uh, in the transparent, when it is part of a framework, uh, this will helping the organization, this will improve the organization with their performance uh, with respect to environment. The EMS itself does not dictate a level of environmental performance that must be achieved. So, as this is purely your own choice that what type of uh, performance you are going to have for your company. As such, there is uh, no standard set in EMS. You need to develop your own framework, you need to decide that. Uh, what level of objective you want to achieve, what is your target for gaseous discharges, what is your target for liquid discharges, what is your target for 
other kind of reprocessing activities. So, you decide your own target based on your business, based on your goals etcetera. Developing a framework for that is known as EMS. So, like uh, our QMS where we have ISO systems, here also we will see that we have ISO systems which is basically the conversion of EMS into a kind of uh, uh, SOP standard operating process need to follow in the organization. So, this is like uh, uh, following how that framework with the help of uh, ISO system and uh, this ISO standards are developed by international body in order to establish requirements, specification, guidelines, characteristics that can be used consistently to ensure that materials, products, processes and services are fit for their purpose. We have discussed this ISO in line of uh, either TQM or QMS quality management systems, but ISOs are also applicable. They are actually developing they are giving you a guideline that how to develop a framework and values in that framework you have to fill on your own. So, like uh, ISO 14001 that is uh, for our environmental management system we just discussed and another ISO is 50001 that is for energy management system both these are applicable for sustainable manufacturing green manufacturing. If you have uh, 14001, it means you are following some kind of environment management in your organization. If you are having 50001, you along with environment, you are also following this energy management system. So, that is the framework and you need to give values that if I am having a 50001 system in my organization, that how much solar energy I am going to produce and then what I am going to do for that, how I am going to monitor whether in my total energy consumption this much percentage is coming from solar or not. So, these kind of things values whether I decide 1 percent or I decide 50 percent that is not important, but even if I have decided that 1 percent of my entire energy will come from solar what type of systems I have developed for that and how I am controlling that every day, every time, every second whatever is my total energy consumption 1 percent of that is coming from the solar. So, that is actually the purpose of these kind of uh, uh, standard frameworks and uh, these are the two very popular frameworks. Many organizations are now uh, trying to get these certifications uh, and there are audit agencies which are available which help you which provide consultancy as well as then finally, they do audit for you and give these kind of uh, uh, certificates. And uh, when you have these certificates, uh, you can use these certificates for getting your carbon credits also. Then another important terminology is the landfill free. Now, what does it mean? that uh, the waste which we are generating the industrial waste uh, or the municipal solid waste uh, most of the time that waste is used for landfilling because you do not have any other use of that waste. So, that is uh, a very interesting concept uh, that the waste is completely reused, recycled or converted into energy. If waste is completely used in these three things uh, either it is reused, recycled or at least 90 percent of the waste which ever generated that is reused, recycled or converted to energy then we say that uh, it is landfill free. Otherwise, uh, if it is not possible to reuse, if it is not possible to recycle, if the waste is not converted into energy then the only alternative available to you is uh, to go for landfill. So, that is a uh, uh, important thing that uh, if uh, we develop our processes in such a manner that uh, we produce only landfill free waste, uh, then you will have a very sustainable manufacturing organization. Then another concept uh, which is uh, very interesting uh, in the light of uh, this uh, sustainable manufacturing discussion that is the concept of uh, life cycle. Whenever we talk of uh, manufacturing uh, is in green terms uh, or sustainable or smart manufacturing, 
we immediately talk of uh, life cycle assessment. Now, what is it uh, life cycle first? Now, life cycle has two important uh, points to make. One is uh, consecutive and interlinked stages of a product from raw material acquisition to generation of natural resources to final disposal. Now, from the original raw material to the final disposal of the product that is actually the entire cycle. So, there are various stages intermediate stages where you are adding value and right from this raw material stage the product is being made it is distributed used by customer and finally, disposal. So, that is the life cycle that is the complete life cycle of a product that from the raw material to actually the disposal of those products. The life cycle stages include raw material extraction, manufacturing production, transportation, use and disposal, oblique recycling. So, all these are the various stages of life cycle. Depending upon product to product, there may be more or less stages, because like if I am talking of a service, in that service the stages are much less, because customer immediately comes into the contact of the uh, service provider and uh, immediately the service is consumed and there is uh, less of uh, disposal. But since in developing the service, in providing the service also, there may be uses of uh, lot of equipments, uh, tools, uh, supporting material etcetera. So, how that particular products are uh, consumed uh, right from the stage of raw material extraction to the final disposal that is the life cycle of the service component. The second important definition is life cycle assessment. So, this was the second this is another with respect to landfill free. So, now this definition says that compilation and evaluation of the inputs outputs and the potential environmental impact of a product throughout its life cycle. Now, we have just seen that uh, there are various stages in the life of a product. Now, it is possible that uh, the negative impact of that product is more during the extraction stage and during the distribution or consumer when it is using or when it is being disposed the uh, negative impact is less. Many a times uh, when we are uh, discussing the sustainable manufacturing, we are only concerned during this production stage, but uh, when we are talking of life cycle assessment, uh, it is going to have the entire negative impact uh, right from the raw material extraction to the disposal stage. So, that is the uh, uh, in totality a much wider concept of uh, sustainability. The comprehensive examination of a product or service environmental aspects and potential impacts throughout its lifetime including raw material extraction, transportation, manufacturing, use and disposal. For an example, you may say that uh, I am producing how it is uh, going to have some kind of interesting discussion. I am producing a car which is uh, produced using a very efficient green manufacturing process. So, during the manufacturing of that car, I am following the principles of green manufacturing religiously. I am doing the minimum negative impact to the environment, but the design of the car is not so good. And when the car goes in the hands of the customer, the fuel efficiency of car is very low. So, for driving 5 kilometers, it consumes uh, let us say uh, 10 kilometers of petrol, uh, and uh, because when I am driving 5 kilometers, 10 liter of petrol is being consumed, it is uh, totally creating a negative impact on the environment. So, if I am having a shorter vision of green manufacturing, 
I am only concerned with the production systems which is happening inside the plant. But when I am going for the life cycle assessment, I will also see that when this product will go into use, then at that time also it is an efficient product or not. So, taking 10 liters of petrol for driving 5 kilometer is creating all kind of negative things which I have enjoyed during the manufacturing and therefore, it will neutralizes my uh, environmental manufacturing uh, efforts. So, nowadays it is important that at all stages of the product whether it is from the extraction to the disposal you should have a positive impact on the environment. Then on the basis of this uh, life cycle discussion we have another important thing that is uh, in line that is life cycle costing. Now, the life cycle costing because uh, you are passing through various stages uh, from the extraction to disposal. So, in this case all cost associated with the defined life cycle of a product including capital cost, installation cost, operating cost, maintenance cost and disposal cost. So, at different stage of the product you will have different types of cost right from the capital to the disposal cost all these costs are included to determine the life cycle cost. So, that is again a very interesting concept there are still lot of research going on in the process of evaluation of life cycle cost. We do not have so much standardization about calculation of life cycle cost, but as the concern for environment is increasing. I am sure that uh, people will come with more robust methodology to determine the life cycle cost. This definition of life cycle cost we just discussed does not include external cost like those are born not born directly by the entity that owns and operates a products and service such as environmental cost to society at large. For an example, we had a very ambitious car by Tata's that is Tata Nano and uh, we used to say that uh, it was a car for poor people in the country and the cost was also around 1 lakh when it was introduced into the market. Now, we saw that car only from 1 lakh's perspective, but when the car is moving on the road, when the car was produced, when the car is transported from the manufacturing location to the other locations then lot of negative environmental impact was also done. It is not with respect to nano only, it is with respect to any car, but uh, we never include that if a car is going to run 10 years on the road and uh, in that 10 year period how many kilometers will it run, how much fuel it is going to consume and for consumption of that fuel how much discharge it will make to the environment. And, uh, because of that negative impact of that discharge, how much cost of environmental issues you need to add into that, uh, that we have not included. And there are people who are trying to include all those kind of cost also into the cost of the product. So far, so far which life cycle cost we say that we are not including these kind of uh, negative environmental cost which society has to bear. But uh, in true sense if I am going to calculate this uh, life cycle cost I should take into account uh, these things also. Then another is life cycle thinking that is also the concept of uh, holistic uh, way of doing the business. This is a concept that integrates existing consumption and production strategies and uh, what it says that life cycle approaches help avoid shifting problems from one life cycle stage to another, from one geographic area to another and from one environmental medium to another. Many a times what happens that uh, we have uh, raw material then production then distribution then consumption and then finally, disposal. So,
Now, in this whenever there is a negative issue because uh, I am in Europe and my production factory is in Europe. So, what I will try to do that uh, I will try to shift this uh, location to some other country where there are you can say some relaxed conditions for the environment. If we follow this kind of approach this is not in line with the life cycle thinking. In the life cycle thinking if uh, I am taking the responsibility on my own and I am not going to shift these responsibilities to other stages to other geographical areas or to somebody else like if today in India there are uh, let us say uh, very strong norms for discharging any kind of things in river Ganga. So, let us not discharge in river Ganga let us discharge it to some other tributaries of river Ganga. If you have this kind of uh, uh, thinking it is against the concept of uh, sustainable manufacturing and particularly life cycle thinking. So, neither you can shift from one medium to another medium nor from one stage to another stage nor from one geographical area to another geographical area. So, that all is about the life cycle way of uh, uh, thinking and life cycle cost uh, life cycle assessment and that is very important for having a uh, robust sustainable manufacturing uh, concept. Then another important thing with respect to sustainable manufacturing is we need to have some kind of understanding that uh, waste also has some value. When we understand that waste has some value then only you can find a proper solution of uh, this kind of sustainable manufacturing. So, two things are again becoming popular in these uh, uh, discussions one is waste to energy that how you can use if you recall our discussion when we discuss that uh, landfill free. So, we can have one use of our waste that is you can generate energy from the waste. So, a recovery process in which waste is incinerated or otherwise turned into a stream or electricity and used to generate heat light or power through the process of combustion. So, when by following some kind of chemical processes you are able to use the waste for getting some kind of energy whether it is electricity or other kind of power steam whatever uh, the form of that energy may be, but uh, it is uh, uh, in conjunction with the sustainable manufacturing because uh, it is almost impossible to have a waste free manufacturing. Some waste will obviously, be there but uh, how to use that waste that is uh, need to be discussed. And the another thing is waste to profit if you add value to waste automatically that waste is not a waste then you cannot say it is a waste because it is offering some value. So, as long as it is having no value it is a waste. So, we need to also go to this concept that uh, we need to convert waste to value so that uh, it becomes a revenue activity the process of uh, using one company's waste or byproduct as the input or raw material for another company. So, that uh, you can think of that uh, output of this company is a input to other company. For an example if you go to a rice mill. So, in the rice mill when uh, rice uh, milling is done paddy milling is done you get rice and then you also get lot of husk. Now, that husk is the output or that is the waste for the rice miller, but that is input for those organizations which are generating their power plants using that husk. Those companies which are making oil out of that husk for them also it is an input. So, that is the concept of waste to profit. So, waste of one company byproduct of one company is acting as input or some kind of raw material for another company. So, that is uh, going to increase the profit and decreasing waste and it is also known as byproduct synergy. So, it becomes a kind of uh, you can say a very sustainable business model that output of one 
or you can say by product or uh, waste of one is input for other and therefore, you can develop a good cluster. So, that uh, cluster becomes a sustainable cluster, a sustainable manufacturing cluster and that way you will be able to develop the competitiveness not only for a particular company, but for the entire cluster. So, with this we understood various important terms which are used in discussions of sustainable manufacturing. With this we come to end of this discussion. Thank you very much.